So if you are a small business owner, customer acquisition is probably a concern of yours. Whether you're great at it and put a lot of work into it or you're struggling with it, this is a huge topic for any small business owner. Now, it's probably not going to surprise people that listen to this podcast where I'm going with this. I'm Ricky Howard. This is the DOD Contract Academy podcast. And today I'm going to talk about customer acquisition tactics that you can use that most small business owners aren't using. So how do I know they're not using them? Well, first, we know that most small businesses aren't trying to sell to the government at all. So if you're watching this and you're not trying to sell to the government, that's my focus. That's the focus of this podcast. But acquiring customers is much different for selling to the government and selling to the military than it is commercially. And I'm very familiar with both. I sell commercially and I sell to the government. And uh, we've been doing this for a while. You can listen to the podcast for a lot of uh, background information there. But if you're uncomfortable with the regular B2B or B2C marketing processes, you might be a little bit more comfortable selling to the government. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But first, let's go over what some of the challenges are for regular small businesses that are selling to the government. Now, I just did a quick Google search and then I plugged some stuff into ChatGPT like a lot of us do here. So I'm just gonna read through some of the challenges that you may be experiencing as a small business owner when you're trying to bring in customers. Some of these resonate with me, some of them don't. But in, as I hit each one, I'm gonna talk about how you can acquire customers, government customers that are buying what you sell and how that is going to be a little bit different than maybe what you're doing now. Okay, so number one, number one thing that popped up was limiting marketing budget. So I'm looking at ChatGPT. It says small businesses often have limited financial resources to allocate towards marketing activities, making it a challenge to implement comprehensive customer acquisition strategy. So really, hey, we don't have enough money to, whether you're running something like Facebook ads, which I've done, uh, Sometimes successfully, sometimes not, or more traditional advertising campaigns, or you're paying an outbound sales team, which, by the way, I pay an outbound sales team, so I'm pretty familiar with that. How is that going to differ when we're talking to the government? Well, if you're a small business owner, especially when you're just getting started, we don't have to guess who's buying what you sell, and that's going to be the answer to a lot of these. You can go to systems. You can go to systems that are free online to see which government organizations buy what you sell. You could see just about every contract the government has awarded and who they awarded it to. You can see what government office awarded it. Okay, so this is a great way of identifying who you're going to be reaching out to. You're not sending email campaigns to the government. You're not putting at big advertising campaigns together. Yeah, you know, sure, some of the big defense companies are doing stuff like that, but you don't have to do that when you're just starting off. You just need to know who you're selling to. And that can extremely reduce how much money you're spending since you're not guessing, right? So instead of, you know, for instance, for me, I might be marketing to small businesses that sell construction services or legal services, law firms, right? But now I have to kind of mass send things to those audiences, and that costs money. But with the government, there might only be a dozen offices that are buying legal services, right? So if you're running a law firm, for instance. And so we could see which offices those are. So now you have 12 or so targets. And you also can see when they need something, they have to put it out publicly, right? And there are different methods that they used to do that. They put out requests for information and sources saw it before solicitations come out. And then solicitations come out, requests for proposals, requests for quotes. You're not guessing in those cases if they need something. You're not guessing if they have money. You're not guessing who's doing the buying. We know who's doing that. So you can go out and find those. And you don't necessarily have to spend any money to do that. You can do that yourself. You could have somebody do that as kind of a part-time or added job that's already working for you. Now, eventually, when you're scaling, you will have to make some investments. But in the beginning, you don't have to do any traditional marketing. And we can uh, we could talk about how to actually answer something called a request for information. And we do in other podcasts and other YouTube episodes. Uh, the next thing that comes out in ChatGPT is identifying target audience. Well, we talked about that a little bit. 
but you can go into something like usaspending.gov or you can buy a tool like GovTribe or GovWinIQ or Govly. I like Govly, uh, for instance. But you know, when you're looking at these tools, you can actually see who your target audience is. You don't have to, you're not spending money identifying the target audience. You don't have to pay someone like me to identify the target audience for you. You can go in and you can do it yourself. You can identify your target audience using these tools. You know, for a service disabled veteran owned business that's selling, we'll go back to construction, you might be targeting the VA and you probably should be. If you're not already, you should be targeting the VA. I'll tell you that. That's a free tip because they buy from service disabled veteran owned small businesses at a rate that's higher than any other agency. But we could see who's buying what you sell. And we could also see the kind of businesses they're buying from. So not a guessing game. Much, much easier. So these are the, the positives of selling to the government. We All the information is there. We just need to know where to get it. Start with usaspending.gov. Play around with that. I believe I have a podcast episode, uh, DOD Contract Academy. You can find it anywhere uh, that goes over different research tools and how to uh, go through some of these processes. Okay, so competition. Small businesses often operate in highly competitive markets. I'm reading this off the internet, making it harder to attract and retain customers. Competition against larger companies with established brand recognition and bigger marketing budgets can pose significant challenges. That's true. Competition is a big thing. It's a big thing with the government as well. But here's the thing. The government has to buy from small businesses. So roughly 23% of their spending is going to go towards small business only contracts. So when we're looking at something that's already set aside, you're already eliminating competition from the big companies, right? And there are ways for you to influence who the government's going to buy from before they even make that determination. So let's say you're a woman-owned small business. Well, you can advise the government to set different opportunities aside for only women-owned small businesses. So now all the large companies can't compete against you. And now none of the small businesses can, can compete against you unless they're a registered woman-owned small business. So, and that's key. You have to be a registered woman-owned small business. That's a process. It takes a few months. But- there are a lot of women-owned small businesses that aren't registered with the government as a woman-owned small business. They can't compete against you. Okay, You have to be a registered woman-owned small business. Same with service-disabled veteran-owned small business. 8A, that's a process. You apply, you have to be accepted as 8A. This isn't about 8A, but only to say there are ways of eliminating competition, and it's built in already to government contracting. Okay, let's talk about building brand awareness. Building brand awareness is something that can you can spend a lot of time and money on, you could be on social media, building brand awareness. For the government, a lot of this has to do with going to conferences and setting up booths and really kind of building your brand awareness that way. But in the beginning, a small business, especially if you're you're very niched out and you're focused, you don't necessarily need any brand awareness going into this, okay? Do you need to build past performance? Meaning, do you have to win government contracts and and even commercial contracts just to show the government that you know what you're doing? Sure. Yeah, you have to do that. And, and there are ways to do that. And you can. But you don't necessarily have to be making investments. In fact, if your goal was just to sell to the government, I wouldn't even waste your time with any of the social media stuff, except for LinkedIn. You want to have a nice LinkedIn account because you can reach out to government officials on LinkedIn. That's a great way to do that, actually. But you don't need an ad campaign. You don't have to spend a lot of money there. So uh, let's just move that aside. Brand awareness, uh, that's for companies that are a little bit bigger and are really making their way. They already have multiple government contracts. And they're using, by the way, that revenue from the contracts they won. Government contracts are pretty lucrative. They're taking that and they're putting that back into their business. And they're using that to make investments in going to conferences and um, you know, building up their team. Right? If they're going to have a marketing team, you know, you're going to use the money from the contracts you've already won. So you don't need to start that until you've already won some of these and you have that kind of a, like a self-licking ice cream cone, right? You use the money that you're winning on these contracts to build up your business. And before that, you can do that, a lot of this yourself or with the people you already have. Uh, choosing the right marketing channels. I already talked a little bit about LinkedIn. This is just another um, bullet on ChatGPT that talks about what small businesses are concerned about, right? So, and look, as I mentioned before, I market to commercial clients to or business, uh, small businesses and medium-sized companies. Sure, I've got to make, yeah, I mean, this resonates with me. I have to think about which of the social media channels and which places the companies that I'm targeting are going to be hanging out on. Are they hanging out on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or 
or Google, but you don't have to worry about that if you're selling to the government. Like I said, I'd, I'd have a strong LinkedIn account, but I wouldn't necessarily be using it for marketing. I'm using that just to show that I'm a real person, a real company. They can look at it, see kind of your resume on there. Um, that's really strong. But outside of that, I'm not worried about marketing in the traditional sense when I'm selling to the government. What I'm doing is I'm looking for who buys what I sell. I'm using USA Spending. You can use Sam.gov for free and look for the request for information and sources sought. That's where I'm hanging out, right? And then I can influence just by responding to those um, requests. A, a source of sought might ask you for you know, a five-page white paper on, you know, if you're a social media advertiser, it might be for advertising. And yes, the government does buy social media advertising from small businesses, right? So if that's your niche, um, it might ask five questions like, hey, do you, have you been involved in making videos that go on YouTube? Or can you manage a social media um, budget for X, Y, and Z? So you're going to answer those questions. But in addition to answering those, you can throw things in there like, hey, I'm also a woman-owned small business, and I recommend you set this opportunity aside for me. So there's lots of things you can stick in there like that to make you more competitive. And you know, in some cases, that can turn into you're the only one that responds. The government's like, hey, you know, you're, you're doing something very unique. Let's talk about a contract without any competition, right? So you can see how that influence um, really can make a difference there. So that's where I'm looking as far as which marketing channels I'm looking for the opportunities and I'm going direct. So I'm not, I'm not wasting time with a lot of the social media stuff. I'm not putting out billboards or radio ads. Generating quality leads. Again, so now in the government space, this is something that works, I think, a lot differently than in the commercial space. You know, in the commercial space, I have an outbound sales team, which is great. So they are going to reach out to my target audience. So there are certain types of businesses that I do a, a lot of work with to help them win government contracts. Well, they reach out to those companies and they reach out to a lot of them. And then the ones that are interested, they set up a meeting. You know, I do, um, you know, an initial sales call and then we would go on contract. Now, typically I'm sending, I'm selling kind of high-end consulting to these businesses. But when I'm selling to the government, right? So when I flip that, if I'm helping them sell to the government, that is not what I'm doing to find leads for them, right? Again, there are, I use paid tools. I don't, I personally don't use Sam.gov. You can use Sam.gov, but I might use one of these other tools that I'm paying for. Govly is a great place to go, by the way. And if you tell them you heard it from me, you'll get a discount on a Govly membership. And, and they're going to show you a lot of things that aren't going to be available on even, even in the Sam.gov. So Again, these are just places you can find opportunities to sell to the government. The government is going to tell the public when they want to buy something. And so you can search for, you know, whatever your business focuses in, right? You can search for those opportunities to see if the government is buying something, right? And depending on what industry you're in, you might not see something every day, but in some cases you might. Cybersecurity is a big one. Right? So you're going to see a lot of cybersecurity efforts. So you can look for those leads um, on a free tool. Now you can automate that search with a paid tool. But that makes it a lot different than the way that you are traditionally finding leads. Like my wife's in real estate and finding leads in real estate and, and closing, that's, that's really difficult. That's a lot of the work that goes into it until you start building up a business and some people you know, start coming to you. But in the government, you can, it's not a guessing game. We know who's buying what you sell. They're going to tell you. We can go to Sam.gov. Hey, the Air Force Lifecycle Management Center, Office HNJ at Hans Command Force Base is looking for this cyber tool, right? They're going to tell you, hey, if you have any information, if you can do it, let us know. Or maybe they're requesting an actual proposal. It's not a guessing game. So that's a lead. It's a loose lead because you just found it. Now you have a lot of steps and we're not going to cover that here. You have a few steps you need to take to really work that lead, but you have your lead. So what that tells me is somebody in the government has money, has the ability to buy from me. Now I need to convince them that I'm the right person to buy from. So th there's your lead. That's how you get leads. That's how you get a lot of them. Now, you can also get leads through relationships, which is a huge part. You want to create those relationships after you find a lead like that. Um, you know, you can certainly go to conferences and find leads. I don't want to hit that here. And then once you're on contract with the government, that's also another great place to um, generate leads because you're already on contract. You can work with your team, your government team, and they usually will point you in the right direction provided you're doing your job well and, and they like you and they like your product. Convincing potential customers. There's a whole, I do a whole series on this, but 
So once you have the lead, now you're doing what I just talked about. You're influencing, you're convincing them that you're the one that should be going on contract. Now, going back to my list here on ChatGPT, limited resources and manpower. That's true. That's going to be a challenge for everyone. And I don't want to make it sound like government contracting is easy because it is not. But if you do have limited sources and manpower, you want to be very focused. You want to, through research, through some of the tools I've already mentioned, see who's spending a lot of money in your area on small business contracts. So you want to focus on them. And if you're just like a solopreneur, for instance, maybe invest you know, there are different tools out there to find opportunities, but maybe invest in one of them that can do an automated search for you. So especially if you're doing something specific, um, you know, you can set up a search and then when something's available, you'll just get an email. And that's really the best way to do that. If you have limited resources, um, some companies just go after SBIR, small business innovative research contracts in the beginning, you can do that. But this is a good way setting up an automated search just lands in your email every morning. And then you take the amount of work that you could do. So if you're responding to requests for information and sources sought, you might respond to one or two a month if you do, if you have limited resources. And then you'll start seeing and make sure you're always following up with them. Call the office, make sure they got it. If they don't like what you sent in, you know, start getting those critiques. And then you can that's something you can build up over time to get better and better at writing. And then you're gonna you will start finding where your place is uh, within the government. Lack of marketing expertise, like this is all of us, right? Whether it's commercial or government, you have to put the hours in to get the expertise. But um, uh, I've given you some resources that you can use. And you can go, by the way, to my, you can, if you listen to the podcast, this is going to be free training. And a lot of clients have paid me a lot of money to walk them through the process. We do have a course at the website that you can uh, purchase at dodcontract.com. Go over there and take a look at that. But if you just want some free, training, go to the podcast, listen to that. And then adapting to changing consumer behavior is the bottom there. That's true. You do have to adapt to changing consumer behavior. The government certainly changes where they're spending money and it's a rather complex process, but it's not a guessing game as to what they're buying. So you may see that because they'll tell you a lot of times in these solicitations, you know, and you might see that there's a switch from buying a certain type of software uh, license, maybe a perpetual license. Now they want to buy term licenses or, you know, or vice versa, or maybe there's a change, maybe lowest price technically acceptable is falling out of favor towards another contracts type. And if you don't understand what those mean, that's fine. You can uh, check out my website. You can go Google the terms and see what they mean, but you only have to learn what you need to when you're just getting started. So hopefully that helps you out. Now, just another uh, point on adapting to the changing consumer behaviors. Selling to the government is not just a way to double or triple your revenue for your business, but if you're selling commercially, and I advise that most companies, if you have a product that can be sold both commercially and to the government, I advise that they have both streams coming in because what you're doing is you're building value in your business and you're building resiliency. So as the economy fluctuates, right? Your commercial revenue line will go up and down. If you're winning government contracts, those government contracts tend to be pretty stable and they can be lucrative depending on what industry you're in. So you're basically balancing the two revenue streams and the opposite can happen. You know, when the commercial sector, uh, when your commercial revenue is really high, there might be something in the government, like the government shuts down for a couple months or, or something happens you don't win the contract you think you're going to. The two can offset each other. And by the way, a lot of businesses that are trying to sell their company start selling to the government because the government contract, I can think of very few things that are going to increase the valuation of your business like a government contract. If you have a three-year, $5 million government contract, that is revenue that's going to be coming in. And it's probably the most stable revenue that you can think of. Outside of the government, something really bad happening to our government, that money is going to come in and support your business. And that can really affect how much you can sell your company for down the line, if that's your goal. All right, so we've talked about a lot of stuff here. Hopefully, I've answered some questions. Hopefully, I've given you something to think about. If you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to reach out. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to hear in the future, if there's any episodes that you'd like to hear, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast. Love to uh, hear what you think of the show. We have some great guests coming up over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you next time.